song let me see if this is live good morning everybody assuming this is live so far it's been pretty stable it's been uh it's been live most days let's see click here to watch the live stream oh we are live sweet is everybody in good morning good morning barry manuel i can see the chat at my website right now it's pretty sweet huge pianist.fun is working as well i believe uh, Genghis Khan bear, Genghis bear. We set up a, he set up a backup website for me in case Squarespace pulls, takes the salmon from the bear's paws. And that's a huge pianist.fun. And I guess he's streaming there as well because, uh, Amy always sets up the streams. And so, uh, we want to make sure that he can, uh, he can do it. Oh, is crowd around here? Oh, sweet. That's cool. Jengis is a pimp because of this site. Oh, dude, it's great. Well, UNN is also popping hard right now. He's he's running that website as well. And then we got a bunch of other really, really strong bears helping me with that. And I just, this is our newest venture and I couldn't be happier about it. Like I just uh, set this up in my basement. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a green screen that will be used for a lot of news reports. <laughs> And uh, I know it looks wrinkly and not lit properly, but I've ordered a bunch of more stuff. I have more green screen coming, more lights coming, uh, mustaches, wigs. UNN is going to be legit because here's the thing. I have I used to love SNL and Daily Show way, way back in the day because I think uh, like fake news and Norm MacDonald, obviously, um, all those guys, because the, the the fake news joke is is you can reveal more truth in fake news than you can in uh in real fake news, which is like CNN and all that stuff. And so um, we're starting this whole news network, and I I can't wait because there's two there's two roads to take complaints. You either just bitch and bitch and bitch, or you uh you make something better. And now that SNL and The Daily Show are pretty much just serious government propaganda agencies with almost no humor attached to them, what a beautiful time to start something new. And with the amount of creative and engaged and just awesome bears out there, we can have correspondence everywhere. Like somebody sent me a video yesterday, they're on their way to an NRA convention in Dallas and how there's just millions of people. And I'm like, dude, record it for UNN. And the more stuff you guys can send me and the email that is attached to it is, one second, unbearablenewsnetwork at gmail.com. And I'll read a couple that you guys have already sent me. Whether it's just a print story, whether it's video, like I want this to be epic and we can finally do this stuff. I can... I can finally invest in, in growing because, um, because of the subscriptions and it's by choice. None of these videos will be, will cost you any money. None. I, I thought of that very early on that that isn't what I'm about. I'm about, it just isn't, I'm not going to limit this to anybody. And I've seen a lot of people, uh, do a monthly pledge, whether it's a dollar or $20, whatever at a uh, huge pianist.com slash subscribe. And I can tell, and I've gotten to know some of these people because there's also the bear phone. You guys can, uh, anybody with bear phone access can text me during the show and I'll absolutely read it. And I tried to get to most of them yesterday. I got to a good amount, but uh, bear phone's growing, growing big time. And the more I talk to people on the bear phone, the more I kind of see that what type of people are attracted to supporting this this adventure we're all on. It's people that are doing well in their life and just really, really are pissed off. It's not even that they're freedom loving. That's a given. I think everybody watching this is freedom loving, but are starting to get really annoyed at feeling powerless to uh, to this growing authoritarian shit that's happening in America and the whole world. I mean, talk to the Australian and New Zealand bears. It's even worse there, which is almost un incomprehensible. 
and um, just supporting whatever you can a month, which is uh, a lot of people can afford that very easily because they've done well in their life and they just don't want the next generation to, uh, to have to deal with a lot of this bullshit. And so it's those guys. And, and I would do the same thing. Like I, I would, that's what I would be doing. And, um, and for those of you that are running short on cash or in college or just had a new baby or something like that, this will never cost you a dime ever. So don't worry about that. I will not do that because I want, I'm so, um, passionate about this stuff that I want it to exist out there. And to be honest, it doesn't really have the production quality yet to justify that. So it's still just a, a big bear with a webcam and a piano, but I'm trying to change that. And I, I, I was thinking about our strengths. When I do the It's Time videos, and you guys send me all these hilarious It's Time uh, takes on whatever we're riffing on, we could do that with news. Like my brother is going to be in a tree, and it's just going to be called The View From Up Here. And I'm going to be like, now we cut to The View From Up Here, and my brother's just in a tree because he's an arborist, and he's just going to be like, nothing matters. He's going to, like, I want to do characters where it's like, he's the, not like, he has this nihilistic quality where he's always in a tree looking at something really beautiful and he just, he can't get past a roadblock in his head. Uh, the Bear Jew is going to be uh, a Jewish perspective from Manhattan where he's going to just be pissed about the price of deli meats. You know, I want characters. I want things that aren't just political. And here's something someone sent me that I thought was really interesting. And then I have a great letter to read to you by um, Artling. But uh, real quick, so this dude says, Big Bear, yes to the competing news network. So we're thinking about having a, a fake competing news network. And so UNN should be the satire news network about progressives, identity politics, communist policies. It's time videos, five-year-old pansexuals reporting parents to CPS for not using their preferred pronoun, et cetera. And then the Bear Network, which is Bear, uh, you know, BNN. It's going to be the Fox take where it should be like, it's all about the good news of capitalist moral and individual victories. Like area man stops using soy, takes leadership role in his marriage, wife and kids now respect him. And then the bear news, it needs a, a constant stock tipper at the bottom for honey and salmon prices. And you can also satirize Fox stuff where you can make almost like this fake, this fake, uh, I don't even know. Maybe it's just everybody's so jacked up all the time. Like people are just doing dips and push-ups and shooting guns inappropriately because uh, there's plenty to make fun of on the right. It's just so overdone and so mean-spirited in, in mainstream media that it's not funny at all. You know, when it's like everybody's Hitler and the worst and that's not funny. You can make fun of the right easily where you just, you're always inappropriately shooting guns is f hilarious. Not at people, not to be evil, but just like that is a, a funny thing you can make fun of on the right. There's a few things you can make fun of on the right that are just dying to be mocked. But um, one that they, like a lot of people on the right seem like they're, they're always a little jacked up on like caffeine or like testosterone when everybody's just like, you know, just just like doing those like hand exercises or just shadow boxing, like making fun of just that jacked up uh, masculinity is fucking hilarious. Unless you're calling it toxic or saying that people shouldn't act that way. That's ridiculous. And I think some of the mottos, because my motto in life and in comedy is I might be wrong, but I'm not lying. I think this UNN is going to be we might we might be lying, but we're not wrong. Because a lot of times the satire reveals more about society than society can ever reveal about itself, which is most of the things that I've gotten in trouble for lately and, and I've been deplatformed for have all been that concept where I reveal something more true in my satire. Like when I was doing that uh, Black Panther stuff where I was saying that as a white person, I can't relate because there's no white people in it. Obviously, I don't actually feel that way. One of my heroes is Thomas Sowell. Like growing up, I had... Michael Jordan on my wall, who's black. Like being a different race has nothing to do with hero status whatsoever. But I was mimicking all the rhetoric of the marketing for the movie Black Panther, where it's like finally a movie by black people for black people that they can finally look up to. You know, enough of this Captain America stuff. Finally, a black man can see himself in a hero. That 
Same thing they said about um, Obama, where it's like, finally, a black person can see another black person in the highest office. It's like, that's not how people actually think at all. And I think someone who, who reflects your values and what you want to be, your ideal, Thomas Sowell is, is more of an ideal man for me than 99.99999% of the white population. And he's as black as night. And you never even think about that, you know? And, and that's why I was revealing that racism. And in doing so, I got banned from Twitter. Like, these are the reasons I was getting banned from Twitter because satire is so darn powerful. Because it shows, it doesn't just tell you, it shows you what's going on. And uh, I'll read some of these in a second, but um, I, I wanted to read, let me go on. The, and if you want to send me a message right now, by the way, you can always email me. You don't have to pay money for me to read your messages. Someone uh, wrote that on a comment somewhere. It's like, oh, I, for, I forgot I have to pay to talk to you. And I'm like, I didn't even write back, but it got me thinking where I'm like, that sounds horrifying. Of course, that's not true. Like I'm the first person to stay with crowds after shows for hours or be your friend just from knowing you through comedy or through whatever. And um, like that email I just read, no one paid me to do that. It's just how capitalism works. It's like when you have a ton of messages, you have to figure out a fair way to uh, get to them. And there's nothing more fair than than ca capitalism. Just mark it. Like if you um, pay money, you can get ahead of a line. And that's just kind of how the world has to work or else you end up in Venezuela. Oh, I've been thinking Bernie Sanders is almost like an evil wizard. You ever think about wizardry? Like he says words and like people do crazy shit. Like he's literally convinced people that they should, he has three houses. He's never had a job in his life. He's never made a job in his life. He's convincing people to give him all their money and that's like being good to poor people. I don't know if any of you guys have been to San Francisco lately. It's covered in human shit. Like no joke. It's one of the highest crime rates in the country. There's the most amount of homeless people. Um, the, the disparity between wealthy and poor, it, it couldn't be bigger. It's like, Sau it's like Saudi Arabia crazy. And then you go to a lot of these right wing areas and... There's so much less homelessness or poverty or disparity between the wealth and the poor. It's all such a hypocrisy. I really believe that 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 uh, Bernie Sanders, in some archetypal way, is a wizard. He's like an evil wizard, where he says words that are like almost like a like a spell. Where he's like the one percent. It's like, well, you are the one percent, and then he says. He says things and he makes people literally give them their wealth. He makes people want to be slaves. And I've never seen anything like it. It's, a, it's very fascinating. I'm, I'm just dying to know what goes into these, these incantations. It's like you call, you call authoritarianism tolerance. You call freedom, you call censorship um, compassion. And people believe it because I just think so many people are, are raised so badly. All right, let me find Artling's... Uh, he wrote this really cool thing about art. I want to make sure I read it. Where it... Oh, here we go. Because he's awesome. If you guys don't know Artling... Uh, his name's Aaron Hartling, but his, uh, on, on Instagram and Twitter, it was, it's, it's Artling. He's painted a lot of the beautiful things that you've seen that I've posted. He's, and, he, and he will... On YouTube, he will take requests and he paints just these vivid pictures of people doing it's like he's he's incredible his career which he doesn't even care about because you can tell he's just one of those crazy artists uh is just only gonna keep going and going because he really does art like art that makes you go oh my god all right let me i gotta show you at least one or two of these before i even read this um how do i find how do i find bear art i have a whole file called bear art this dude is just a, it's under images. I try to stay organized, but I do so much daily. 
Well, first he did this one. He's also hilarious. Uh, he painted this one when I was getting hammered by the local press about, hang on, look at this. <laughs> I mean, that's hilarious, but I'll show you one of his ones that's like profound. Yeah, and, and this town, it's like we're, we're selling our house, which is really sad because I've grown to really love this house in the area. And I was with my brother and Peppy last night. Um, I mean, 99% of the people in this town are amazing. It's just when you get that feeling that my wife got, it's more my wife than me, to be honest with you. Oh, he, oh, Aaron, um, Hartling, Hartling did this one too when I got kicked off Twitter. Tweet, tweet, bitch. Tweet, tweet. It's that mob mentality, that herd mentality with the shunning that happens to women that my wife just finds intolerable. And she's just like, we got to get the fuck out of here. Because she, you know, when, when she was having a hard time finding a babysitter and we couldn't have a date night for several months now, uh, just because of that herd mentality bullshit, she's like, this place is fucking, there's some cancer here. There's some rot. Look at this. This is he painted this. This is the unbearables pulling the individual out of the hell of um, Twitter and CNN and just the mouth. You see how that's this big this big monster's mouth. I mean, look at that. That just that's why I love art and graphics and graphic design. And when you guys send me stuff, I talk about it a lot because I can't do this. I can play music that can make people feel, but that makes me feel in a way that I, I, I can't put into words or music. And I just find it incredible. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's crazy what's happening in the local school district here. You know, one of my friends has had to get a lawyer and, uh, cause all these people banded together to try and get him fired because he had an NRA sticker on his car. I'm dead serious. They, they thought that he was a potential school shooter because, this toxic femininity is taking over where it's all about, you know, safety. Guess what? Guess guess what isn't safe? Learning. Learning, you have to wrestle with ideas that make you feel uncomfortable. That Jordan Peterson did this for me. Jordan Peterson pulled me out of hell. Because he said, it's okay. And my mother as well has always allowed me to keep my spark. So I never got just so vanquished that I couldn't be pulled out. But Jordan Peterson was like, learning is a struggle. You know, you want to be confronted with things that make you feel uncomfortable or you you end up in hell. And I, I had been waiting so long to hear those words come from a strong, like alpha male type that was still kind. But Jordan Peterson has that compassion, but yet that, but he's not, he doesn't have that those empathy weaknesses. Where people, where, where sorcerers like, uh, like Bernie Sanders can can trick people. And man, they are they are effective with this trickery. When when the one in a thousand can shut down art because anyone uncomfortable can dictate anything, that's that's a recipe for the the, the downfall of man. I mean, literally, this isn't hyperbole. Venezuela in my lifetime was one of the wealthiest, safest. Uh, countries in, in, in South America. It had the most natural resources in the world as far as, you know, oil. And I watched Bernie Sanders endorse this socialist takeover of it. And he said that everyone would have all the wealth and it would be shared and it would no longer be with the elites and all that. They're eating their kids now. Venezuela is over 80% under the poverty line. And I think that number is even skewed. I bet it's closer to 100%. They've eaten the animals in the zoos. They're they're no longer registering deaths of of uh, child starvation. It's just, it's hell. It's this. It's where you pull someone out of. If you don't empower the individual and empower the ability of someone to work their way out of tragedy, everyone dies. And that's not hyperbole. That's time travel. You know, that's like when you see things clearly, you can literally warn people about the future. And the, the problem is a lot of people have been so tricked and so warped and their foundation is based on such a lie that their ego doesn't allow them to recalibrate. And no matter what you say, you can say, you can give all the proof that, that this is happening and just show that the heroes that they look up to have been so wrong every time. And it doesn't change the way people think. You know, and, and that's 
horrifying. There's a there's an ancient Greek tragedy about that. I can't remember what it was called, but it was about a girl who could see the future, but she was cursed because no one would believe her. All right, anyway, let's read Artling. And if you want to send me a message, paypal.me slash feed the bear. I will try to get to them. All right. Since I've started posting paintings of controversial intellectuals and public figures, I finally earned the ire of the internet hate mob and trolls. Oh my man, this is going to be... They're regularly commenting with the most needlessly mean insults, and frankly, I find it hilarious. I want these people to shine a light on themselves, showing how absolutely miserable and pathetic they are, that they have nothing better to do than hurl insults at an artist. One particular comment highlighted something very important about these people. It's like you were trying to be a younger Ben Garrison, but you aren't good enough. It should be self-evident that no one starts out being a master of their craft. I might, I'm going to stop you right there. It isn't to these people. They think everyone's born the same and the only thing that changes anything is uh, uh, social oppression. So just know that they don't think hard work leads to anything. Just know that, Aaron. <laughs> like when they say that, they don't, they, they don't value or believe anything that we do. That's why I don't believe there is a middle ground with the left anymore. They're fucking walking off a cliff and I will not go with my family. All right, so anyway. It should be self-evident that no one starts out being a master. All right. I might one day be as successful as Mr. Garrison, and maybe I won't. But if you tell any beginning artist, it's like you're trying to be a young Beethoven, Michelangelo, or George Carlin, but you just aren't good enough, you'll see how fast they recoil and quit. It is infinitely unlikely anyone will be as great as these giants, but does that mean we shouldn't strive to be? These people hate seeing anyone succeed and would rather you be wallowing in the same misery that is their own pathetic life. I want everyone to know that this is just the beginning of my journey. I've got around 15 more portraits to do, which are serving as a warm-up to the big game for going all out on these people through my art. I may or may not find success in all of this, but I want to say thank you for all your support and kind words since I first arrived. The Unbearables are such good people, and whatever we can do to stick together will only help make the world a better place. Much love, Aaron Hartling. Artling. Wow. Awesome, buddy. I love that, that it only motivates you. It's the same thing that happened to me. Of course, and this is not new. This is an ancient problem. Uh, Socrates had, he called them, um, um, sophites? No, what was it called? Sophistry. The, the people that want to submit their will to the group always end up hating uh, the great, hating the happy, hating the, the ethical, hating the moral hating people that have purpose in their life, and they will try to kill you. Kill. Right now, there isn't killing going on because we have so much bread and circuses. But if that, if the, if the food level dips at all, if uh, our, our ability to entertain ourselves dips at all, it's, it's just all out bloodbath. Like they, they fantasize about hurting you. And the thing is, is they can't stand your talent. And this is, Arling is, is, it's so funny, too, that, that you would even question your success. I mean, look at how much you've touched people. Like when I was on Twitter and I would post something you did of us or of me, it would get hundreds of retweets, if not thousands of retweets. And people would be like, I can't believe someone is this great at, at painting. And I've watched you grow. I've watched you from the beginning of what you would first paint. And, and you've grown to a degree that... It's just, it, it, it's astounding. It's like, you're one of those people that I would, you know, in 30 years, there's a chance I will be like talking about how I knew this dude way back in the day. Like you're like some sort of Picasso character. And that's legit. Like that happens, dude. I, I Like there's a lot of famous people that I remember when, when they were just uh, the, the door guy at the improv or whatever. And it's, it's so interesting how life just keeps going. And look at Kiwi Bear. Kiwi Bear did this for me. I mean, look at that. That says all of it. That says what this is. It's a bear with a microphone unapologetically walking away from the mountains and mocking bear. It's like, that's art. And people, these like socialists will always try and take the art from you. And that's one reason why I always say socialist because socialism is growing in America. Because people are starting to equate it with, um, with kindness. And for decades and for generations, we developed all this wealth in America because um, 
because we knew that socialism always leads to uh, starvation and genocide, right? So now that we have all this wealth, but we're losing our soul as, as a nation and as a civilization. And I was listening to a, the most recent Rubin report with this, this legendary capitalist and um, who's also an atheist. And I, here's the thing. He's right economically about all of it. You know, the Ayn Randian, um, what's good for the goose is good for the gander type mentality is absolutely true in business. But here's the one thing you got to understand is, is money doesn't complete people. Why do you think people give me 20 bucks a month just to like have a couple texts from the bear phone? Like that isn't supply and demand. That's because people have a bigger purpose than just money and stuff. Myself included. I think a lot of you gained respect for me when I gave up gold and treasure to stand up for a bunch of kids that no one else seemed to be standing up for because that kind of shows other people that are like you that know that you can be sitting on a pile of gold and just sobbing nihilistically contemplating how to how to stack the gold high enough so you can kill yourself. <clears throat> and that's why people donate. And that's why we can um, survive. That's why I don't have to get another job. That's why I can keep doing comedy 10, 12 hours every day. <clears throat> Is because you guys have taken the time to say, you know what? I'm going to buy his hour special and, <clears throat> and, and to support, you know? And then you like it. And then you subscribe and then you get all this shit for free because I won't charge you for my stand up on YouTube or, or these streams or any of this shit. And this is more enjoyable. A lot of you guys listen to two hours of this every day. And you'd rather do that than watch Netflix. You'd rather do that, that than watch the mind numbing bullshit on Comedy Central. And they have these like exponential budgets where they can literally have the... They have the, the finances to make anything. And you'd rather watch a guy with a webcam and a microphone and uh, just struggle through figuring out how OBS works and how the internet works. Because it's true. And you know it. And there's such value in that. And in that, you support me. And then I will show you people like Artling and people like Kiwi Bear. Oh, look at what... Okay, this is mind-blowing. Artling did this. That's Jordan Peterson freeing the bear from the marionette. I mean, look at that. He drew that with his mind and his hands. He asked for nothing in return. Want to know what else Arling uh, is doing? I'm doing a show in Portland in a wood shop, this epic wood shop owned and operated by this epic family. And it's so cool how a lot of the bears knew this family and there's a lot of crossover and they couldn't believe that we were doing it there. And... This dude's all about family and freedom and comedy and work ethic and saying fuck you to the man. And uh, the stage is going to be on the back of one of these massive, massive trucks in, indoors. It's in, straight industrial, right? And we have to set up chairs. And Artling is going to, he's bringing in like sound equipment and he's painting a backdrop. And Eric Nimmer uh, is going to open for me and my wife and son are going to be there. And right in the heart of soy country, Portland, Oregon, we are going to put on a show and no one is going to stop us. And that is hopeful as fuck. That's the thing is people, people need hope. Myself included. That, look, look at, listen, I was always a, a rebel. I was always a pirate. I was always a guy that would stand up to authority and say, no, this is what I'm going to actually say. I was since day one, you know? I was in college. If you watch old clips of me opening for Kevin Hart in 1999, I'm making fun of postmodernism in that set. There was a there was a, a modern art thing on the wall with a, just a green stripe. And I was like, I want to know what modern art means. I was like, what does this mean? Like, I want to be cool. I'm like, so I took some mushroom mushrooms once and I looked at Andy Warhol's paintings and I was like, what do the Campbell soups mean? And then I realized it's just a green fucking stripe. I did that in 99. So just know, but Peterson allowed me to really take it to the next level and admit things that I believed that I was ashamed of because I had been propagandized so intensely by the Bernie Sanders wizards of the world where I just couldn't believe like the, the data, the data shows no government program ever works. It always has the opposite effect every single time.
There's never an exception to that. And and if you are trying to eliminate the the crazy disparity between disparity between um, the extreme wealth and the extreme poor, lib- progressivism is not it. And if you don't believe me, go right to um, San Francisco because because of their insane social bullshit, they won't build more buildings, right? The rich people, these these billionaire, billionaire, billionaires, all these people trying to kick me off social media, the social media t- uh, people that created all this, they're so elite that they don't want to let anyone else build anything above three stories, right? So now you have all these jobs, all this wealth comes into San Francisco and you can't accommodate with supply and demand. You can't build more supply because the progressives will not let you change the rustic, whimsical nature of their three-story, $100 million shanty. So then what happens? No one can afford to live anywhere because no one will allow you to build skyscraper condos, like in Hong Kong or any of these other like way more um, free market areas. So the people become homeless, and then the local government will not reprimand the homeless people. They, they, in fact, they encourage it. They will give them syringes. And so then the, the city goes to shit. And you will see people taking a shit on heroin right after committing vandalism right next to a house worth $50 million where inside the person owns a company who claims they are trying to um, uh, bridge the gap between the wealthy and the poor. It's a farce. It's a joke. It's a joke so cruel and obvious a comedian wouldn't have thought of it. That they, like, the government policies will not allow builders to accommodate for the growing wealth in San Francisco. So, people become homeless, desperate, and they shit all over the city. That's real. The most progressive city in the country looks like fucking the worst part of Kuwait, where you have tents next to golden palaces. It's, it's, it's a joke. And if you're still on that train, get off. Because as many times as, you know, Facebook is going to kick me off. Look at this. I got this. Oh, no. Well, this is what they're just doing now. Does this post contain hate speech? Yes or no? Anybody in a bad mood or someone envious of me, my sparkly blue eyes, the fact I love my family, the fact I have a healthy face, (laughs) the fact that I smile, I can play the piano, I make people happy, I speak truth to power, I have confidence, I'm an individual, that will make people hit the yes button that I'm speaking hate speech because in their mind, it is. So I've gotten two letters from Facebook in the last week. I posted one of them. Uh, The next one was even more threatening. It said one more violation and they will delete my entire Facebook. And there are people right now that want that so bad. They all day long, all they do is report me for hate speech on any, anything. And what constitutes hate speech? Comedy. That's why I titled this the Scarlet Letter H because there was this, uh, the, the Scarlet Letter was A for adulterous. And there was a time in civilization where if a woman committed adultery, that was such a threat to the family structure of society that she would have to wear that letter in shame and she would be shunned. The new letter is H for hilarious. And now if you're funny, if you're unapologetically funny, which I am, like this is hilarious. That's hilarious. That's very funny. And I'll post that unapologetically and it will be labeled hate speech. Why? Because comedy is a threat to this growing... Irony, because life itself is the irony, so they require no irony, right? You have Zuckerberg, uh, you have all these people, the uh, Jack Dorsey and all these people in San Francisco owning these uh, $50 million two-story shitholes as people starve in the streets, and they are the ones claiming to be closing a non-existent wage gap between men and women. Like, I'll show you this one thing that I saw, that this is why we need to do UNN, the news thing. Because I need to channel this somewhere and not just be saying it as myself all the time and make it, we can make this thing epic, guys. Look at what I, what I just saw on, look at this. Be the difference, close the gender gap, hashtag make the future from Shell. And guys, I'm not one of these anti- oil people at all. All I'm saying is you want to close the, let's see a girl 
run pipe in Alberta, Canada in February for Shell. You want to close the gap? <laughs> and Shell. It's like, so these people that claim, you know, that we have to sign the Paris Accords and global warming, global warming, we're all going to die, we're all going to die. So now Shell, an oil company, is now on board this nonsense. There isn't a gender gap. It, it, it's a fact. Anybody with like eighth grade math gets it. The gender gap is, is number of hours worked. Men work more hours because women become moms. That's the gender gap. It is not due to sexism. It's not because we pay women less just for being women. No, it's because men work more hours because men have dicks and not wombs. And if you think that that's a problem, you're fucking crazy. All right. I'm going to play you this. Uh, Coddington Bear and DeLev worked really hard on this one. So, and it, it was obviously very, very touching. Um, so I'm going to play you this real quick. They, they made like this little two minute thing about our live streams. Good morning. We are live from my backyard. Okay. So now we have tons of these. So what should the basic premise of the song be? Should it just be like famous penises? Oh, before I even, because I I'm obviously can just talk to you about everything. You're one of my legit heroes, but I got him. This book is awesome, everybody. I have, um, my audience are just the coolest people, the unbearables. And I'd love to talk to you about how just we managed to stumble upon the archetype of the bear. But um, that, that's a whole other conversation. And when you see on Twitter, like little bear icons, those are, those are our crew, and, and they're just unbelievable people. Like, That's what, my middle name. Is Bear? Bear. Oh, oh, it's been going on. Sometimes you don't get my jokes off. No, I get them so much that I I, cry, I get sad. No, not, not really. Amy, hey, you want to count mine? I'd rather not praise you because my head. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already whatever you're scared of and the opposite. So there's no... I don't change. Like, no, he I literally... There's, Someone could hand me a giant bar of gold or punch me in the dick and not much different. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, whoa, dude. That's awesome. That's me and Amy and the Bear Cubs. You see what I mean how awesome bears are? These are like the best people in the world. Yeah, yeah, but the Marines are the Semper ones. Semper bend over. That's cute. If you were you're really smart, you would have put the whole thing in line. I want a We are doomed. It's called the 12 bar blues, just like the 12 notes. That's why Peterson's tapped in, man. He knows the fucking math of, of all this. I mean, that was very sweet. It was, uh, it's good, it's good to capture so many of the positive moments because because one of the the wizardry things that i think people do about us is that i'm just this ranting anti-leftist psychopath when in fact this stream since we started is mostly just fun chats music family um the the ability of ranting about things that we're upset about which is part of freedom uh writing comedy together seeing that comedy become specials live specials, specials that we tape. Like, it's it's pretty incredible. And it was awesome that those guys did that to kind of show that. Oh, um, Coder Bear just bear, uh, bear phoned me. Does Artling take solicitation for paid portraits or commission? He forgot that word. I think he felt bad that he said solicitation and made him sound like a whore. I have no idea. Ask Artling. Um, Artling, Aaron Hartling, Artling. Check him out on Twitter, Instagram, just... Uh, Follow him, support him. The guy's an absolute legend. And he's going to be in Portland. You guys can meet him. Uh, maybe you can draw a portrait of somebody there or something. I don't know. We'll figure something out. Uh, Jared uh, said something really funny. He just texted me a, <laughs> he just texted me a, uh, a news story. Man trying to take selfie with bear is mauled to death. Deep down, I know this was you. That's hilarious. And then there's a bunch of other bear phone uh things that people sent me from this morning. I was just trying to see if anyone sent any during the, during the stream. Uh, I got, I, I got to read some of these. Was that Crowder from chat? The real one? I don't know. Cause we don't have, uh, 
We don't have writing sessions on Friday, but I'll show you a funny picture. This is uh, this is our writing room in the morning for Crowder. Hang on, where is it? I Skype in and they put a little, they put a little bear, they put a little body on me on, my, on the TV. That's every morning. <laughs> we, uh, cause I, I write with those guys for like two hours before I even do the streams. That's why on Friday, I usually have a little more, uh, pep in my step. Oh, how about this? How about this? Look at this. It's all written on the subway walls. And the words of the prophets are written on the subway walls. Isn't that hilarious? Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. And the people bowed and prayed to this cell phone neon god they made. The sign fleshed out its warning in the words that it was forming. And the sign said the words of the prophets are written on the subway walls. Soy boys have no balls. So, yeah, Facebook may be axing me. But it's all right. I still got Instagram. I still have the app that Coder Bear is making should be out soon. We just got to get that out as soon as we can because I don't know how many more platforms I'm going to lose because there's 35,000 people on Facebook that I have to alert where they can find updates and whatnot. So um, Patreon still rocking slash WDTL. I don't support the company these days, but they haven't ended me yet. And then... Um, hugepianist.com slash subscribe. And you can always send me emails. But the thing we're really working on now is uh, UNN, Unbearable News Network. And that, we're taking all submissions. Uh, Unbearable News Network at gmail.com. Like, I'll read you. Someone sent me one this morning on Patreon. It was hilarious. Someone else alerted me that, oh, Drew alerted me on Patreon that I had spelled huge pianist wrong for the last month. So I appreciate that. I did fix it. Uh, where is, here we go. Uh, Drew also sent me a couple headlines for UNN. American Democrats claim socialism is not the issue in Venezuela. It's the dog's fault for tasting so damn good. Bernie Sanders proceeded to then eat a live dog on stage. <laughs> like that's what we're going for. That's the vibe. And it's going to be Unbelievable, because I was just doing these din, 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 this just in, and I would do those on Instagram, and people just kept writing me like that it was like their favorite thing I was doing these days, and um, so I was like, what if we really up the ante? And so we need graphics, we need music, anything you guys want to contribute, email um, unbearablenewsnetwork at gmail.com. Um, yeah. All right, someone on the bear phone just asked me to do my Eddie Vedder impression, so I will, and then I will hit up these uh, these super chats on PayPal, and then you know we'll have ourselves good days, and I'll go to the basement and keep working on uh, <laughs> keep working on my uh, my new stuff, my green screen. All right, where's today's? Today is the greatest. All right, here's Eddie Vedder. Eddie Vedder can't speak English. On a Porsche
go. This is from Eli. Hey, Owen, since you're obviously a racist that the media says you are, you may be qualified to answer this question. I voted for him because he was black, and I didn't vote for him because he is black. Are they both racist statements, or are neither of them racist? They are making a judgment uh, call solely based on race. What about the opposite? I voted him for him because he was white, and I did not vote for him because he was white. And most importantly, I voted for that nigger because he is black. See, you just touched on something that I obsessed about. Oh, and by the way, this man's last name is Diaz. So I'm guessing he's not exactly a clan member. Um, you touched on something that I obsessed about for a full month when I was singing this song. That nigga stole my bike! The, what you're touching on is the difference between uh, intent and, and symbol. And you're obviously completely right. There's no, there's literally no argument against what you just said. It's that accurate. And I did a, uh, I did a, uh, a video on YouTube called why people really don't say the N word or why the N, something like that, that, that it, it just, it keeps growing in numbers because people debate about it on there. And I pretty much have a flawless argument. But see, what you're coming from is from a place of um, truth. Of course, they're both racist. I voted for him because he is black or because he is not black are the same thing. You're like racism simply means you judge someone based on their race and not other factors at all. Or the extreme version, because in Thomas Sowell's new book, what the hell? In Thomas Sowell's new book, he discusses the different types of uh, the different types of prejudice and how some are more understandable than others. And like, for example, if someone didn't want to hire a native American bartender, that isn't the same as someone firing a great bartender just because he's native American. You understand? Or if someone, um, if someone, blindly someone says you have to pick someone for your nba basketball team either a, a, an asian man or a black man and someone says black man that's still that's a that's 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 different than saying i will fire i will fire someone that is really great at something just because they're black that is the type of racism that i was always against and am against and i i believe the word to typically mean is that someone's race excludes them versus if someone makes a, um, a get like like taxi drivers, even black taxi drivers would, would routinely not pick up black people because the, the, the odds were higher that they would be assaulted by them. And that is a form of uh, prejudice, but it's based on self-preservation, not based on this irrational hatred for a race. So what you just listed were really interesting things. So I voted for him because you, all right. So um, I think it is worse to say I voted for him. I did not vote for him because he's black than I voted for him because he's black. In-group preference is is more moral than than being against a qualified person for his race. That being said, they both are technically considered racial prejudice. So, uh, and the opposite, I voted for him because he's white. But see, this is where things break down, is white in-group preference is seen as bad, whereas every other group can have in-group preference, even groups of people from wildly wealthy and tyrannical regimes, like a Saudi prince can say that he only supports other Muslims, even though he's he would be the richest person in America, as well as the fact he owns slave slaves. And that is where the real bigotry comes in. It's actually against white people uh, when it comes to that. It's we, We're not allowed to have in-group preference. So not that I personally care, because my in-group preference comes from people being intelligent or people being good, or people being useful, or people seeing the big picture, people understanding comedy, like those, I do have major in-group preference. Like when I was on Twitter and I'd see someone with a little bear icon, I would genuinely trust them more than someone who didn't, until I didn't trust them. You know, sometimes someone with a bear icon would be a total piece of shit. But my original 
reaction to that would be, uh, well, they're probably coming from a good place. And then if they didn't, they're out. But but I wasn't bigoted against people that didn't have the bear icon. You know what I'm saying? And Obama was a fascinating case because a lot of black people were tricked into thinking that he represented them when in fact he was, he has the same racial heritage of American slaves as I do. None. He's not, he's not from the culture that, that people claimed were, were oppressed. In fact, he's half Kenyan, half white from Hawaii. And I think you see a lot of these, these sophists, like Colin Kaepernick is from a white family and he's only half black and he's incredibly wealthy and privileged. So a lot of times you see these, um, these big activists, they're not even from the culture that they claim they're representing. And it's because they're not representing that culture at all. They re- they're still outsiders. Obama hurt black people more than I think any president in history, probably, except for maybe FDR. Uh, as far as just taking away black people's ability to work, black people's ability to take pride in their accomplishments. You know, being having everybody on Rotten Tomatoes give you an A because your movie was made by black people completely takes away the ability to feel any pride in your work. Like, imagine if just because of who my, like, let's say my dad was just like a king or a leper, either way, somebody that was either pitied or um, they had all the power. And... Um, so everything I did, no one criticized ever. Like I could just take a piss in a restaurant and people would be like, it's don't say anything. His dad's a leper or don't say anything. His dad's the king. I would, I would atrophy. I would become a horrible person. I would, I would be unable to differentiate between good and bad. You just enter this, this awful realm of, of just socialistic nihilism. And I feel like um, the American left is doing that to black people where it's like, if you're black and you hire everyone who's black and you make a movie like get out or, Black Panther, and you make it all about black pride. And the media will not let anyone criticize it, even though there's plot holes, even though there's the basic criticisms of movies, of any movie. That That is how you take the power away from an individual. And that's what Kanye is talking about. Kanye West is talking about this golden prison that, that people are putting black people in and how uh, you have to empower the individual or else nothing matters. Like the condescension and the, the blood in the streets in Chicago that is never talked about because they're treated like animals. Like the the Democrats view black people in general, like not all Democrats as individuals. There's Democrats that are not racist, but the, the, like the policies of the Democrats um, treat black people like animals that don't know any better. And that's why you'll have 17 murders in Chicago in a weekend, all black on black crime. It does, it does not make any news. It, um, there's no marches, no no hashtags, none of that shit. Because in their minds, or in the pol- the mind of the policy, that's just what they do. And that's like the difference between a coyote eating your cat and your neighbor's dog eating your cat. Your neighbor's dog eats your cat, you get angry, because that should be a civilized dog. But a coyote, you're like, man, that sucks. Another, But what are you going to do? They're coyotes. I am so not racist that I can't see the world that way without cringing. To take the autonomy away from black people, would, to take away the self-respect and to say that they deserve to be held accountable for their actions. I mean, and the worst is to see the, the, the minority of black people that want that, where they just want to be victims. And Kanye West was like, fuck that. And there's a growing desire amongst the black population to not be treated like infants for their whole life and I know a lot of them through comedy but it's just like there's a lot of Girl Scouts that don't want to be put in Boy Scouts but these goddamn socialists are, are trying to take down everything good they want to make it like these Bernie Sanders people are just like they're the ones pushing it it's not black people a lot of black people end up in a cycle where they have a hard time turning down free money and we all have been there and so, but once you take the devil's poison, your kids don't, don't know that what, they don't have an, uh, an understanding of what it's like to have a dad who goes to work every day. So then they stay in the same cycle. And then when they see people like me 
trying to motivate and try to say, you know, you are not a slave. Being a slave is in your mind. It either inspires the shit out of people or they fucking hate me for it. They hate me for saying, don't speak on this. Don't make me face the fact that I'm a giant toddler. And that there's two roads in that woods. And that's why when people on Facebook are like, just don't rattle the tree anymore, man. You're my favorite comedian. You're losing. It's not taking a knee. It's just keep it. What the fuck am I going to do? What am I supposed to do? I don't even know what I'm saying that, that would possibly be considered hate speech. Any of it is. There, 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 there was a, one of Stalin's main guys said, show me a man, I'll give you his crime. That's me right now. If you, if you see the list of what Facebook, let me try and find that shit. Let me show you what Facebook considers. Let me, let me read to you the most recent thing that they sent me. Okay. You made a wall post that violates our terms of use, among other things. Are hateful, threatening, or obscene are not allowed. What does obscene mean? What does threatening mean? Threatening what? Like an idea? We also take down posts that attack an individual or group. So that means anybody. You can't attack a group. You know what, what group is? The government. A group is, oh, so NRA? The NRA is a group. So when people attack the NRA, do they get taken down? Of course not. They, they don't like my ideas. They will take me down no matter what. This, legally speaking, this is a meaningless threat. What they're saying, there's no way I can accommodate to what they're asking for me at all. You know, we also take down posts that attack an individual or a group. So that means any attack, which is criticism. Or advertise a product or service. Huh? So they also take down posts that advertise a product or service then what the fuck is the point of Facebook? Facebook is to advertise a product or service or criticize a individual or a group. If they said you're not allowed to attack an individual, that's better. I can, I can live with that. I could adapt. I could adapt to only attacking groups. I would stick it to leftism, um, progressives, Democrats, the college system, the government, um, the party of Bernie Sanders. I could get around all this shit. Canadian parliament. Uh, the idea, the ideology of the prime minister, Justin Trudeau, I'm smart guys. I can get around all that shit. When you say post that attack an individual or a group, that's everything under the sun. So I can, what I can only attack. I mean, you could get real sneaky with it and just attack Justin Trudeau's shirt and be like, that shirt's worn by faggots. But see, that goes for the other thing, right? That's a uh, hateful, threatening or obscene. That's that, that word. See what I'm saying? And all faggot means is bundle of sticks. That's all it means. That, that, that word has been given the hate status just by idiots. Saying brave homosexuals are no longer allowed to vote is more obscene. That, that, that's an action. You're saying something that's vicious. Saying like faggots are fun to be around has no vitriol in it. And a lot of times all it reveals is your socioeconomic background. So this is gibberish. And I won't comply with um, a slave owner. All this says is you, you, you bend your knee, you say nonsense, you become a leftist, or we'll get rid of your Facebook account. My account will be deleted, guys. There's no question. And there is no way around it. There's no way to fit in. There's no way to, um, to accommodate them. If they said no swearing, I could accommodate that. If they said no... Uh, posting of an individual's face that doesn't allow you to. I could accommodate that. If they said no talk, they could even say no talk of politics and I could accommodate that. But the problem is if they do that, then the David Hoggs of the world can't say that the NRA has blood on their hands. Isn't that attacking a group in an obscene and threatening and hateful way? But see, then you see how uneven it is. And then it would be just so obvious. That's why it has to be vague. The punishments have to be you know, just no one knows what punishment for why. It, it, it's Soviet. It's Soviet gulag shit. That's what they do. They would say, you're, you're guilty, and now we'll just figure out how. And then I got another one 19 hours ago. This is why it's coming very soon. So please, even if it's just a dollar a month, hugepianist.com slash subscribe. That's so little to pay to stay connected to me so you can get updates and you can know where I'm performing and you can know all this shit. It's fucking, fr there's nothing more expensive than free. And my videos will stay free. And there's a lot of people that have shouldered the burden of, of helping me finance gear and time 
and travel and being able to do other people's podcasts in Los Angeles that I don't get paid for because uh, they know how important this fight is. And I'm right on the front edge of it. I have thousands of people that find me every day that are that committed. And I want you guys to post about this shit. Post when I'm doing live streams. Post where I'm going to perform. This is a fight for survival. And, and the people who know it really know it. And the people who don't know it really don't know it. Or they're just fucking cowards. And I don't know how you can listen to this shit and not see the threats. When you're on a college campus right now, you see zombie eyes. You see victims. The, the richest, most privileged cunts on the planet acting like victims. These women on ESPN saying that all men need to change. That's ES motherfucking PN. And you go back to the Bravo channel then. Sports. Men need an outlet where they watch gr- giant men run as fast as they can into other giant men. And if, and if you think that we're talking in an abusive manner, go somewhere else. That's what freedom is. Freedom doesn't mean you get to dominate what we are. You get to go do your shit and we don't get to stop you. You don't see us going into The View and being like, you're all a bunch of catty bitches. Does anyone want to talk about what you said to Norm Macdonald 20 years ago? Like, all you guys do is talk shit about each other and you all have the same opinion and you talk over each other in a really weird tone. I need you to change. No. The View can be The View. Let The View be The View. Let Barbara Walters with her speech impediment and her fucking rich-ass daddy Bring celebrity journalism into the world where journalism is no longer about reporting the facts. It's about uh, propaganda and being a celebrity where she can sit down with any asshole that they want the narrative to push. And she's like, so tell me, what's it like having a giant car? No, we have to support this. And I have no, and I'm a proud person. And I, 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 I don't like asking for things personally. The reason I don't mind asking and telling you guys to share and to help and do all this stuff is because it's it's more than me. In fact, I'm I I'm taking hit after hit for this. I'm I'm on the news called a racist because I'm doing jokes that are the antithesis of racism. Because the government needs us to be divided racially in order to fucking push their bullshit. And so I'm getting dragged through the mud. I'm getting friends and family members that I thought knew me that that call me concerned. And I'm doing that for you guys and myself and my family. So fucking the least anyone can do is share it, like it. Don't be a fucking coward. Help. Write news stories. Become a subscriber. Come to live shows. Like, if people don't value freedom enough, it goes away. All right. The newest Facebook. A post you made contains content that violates our terms of use. This message serves as a warning. Additional violations will result in the termination of your account. Please read our terms carefully and refrain from posting abusive material in the future. Why well, know it's abuse? The censorship of art. Do you think the people talking shit to uh, Aaron are getting kicked off? Telling him that his art sucks, that he's never going to be great, that he's always going to, he's never going to be one of the great artists, that he, no matter, he's, he sucks. That's actual abuse. That's actual bullying. I I think that those people should be allowed on because I don't think humans have the right to pick out who is being abusive because it's such a nebulous concept. But me making fun of people attempting to take over our society for their own profit is the opposite of abuse. That's that's me standing up. That's, That's why people draw pictures of me Looking like a fucking legend. You think it's... I don't, I've never paid a dime for any of this shit. It's not because of my ego, guys. It's because people see it. And they go, oh, shit. He's getting fucking massacred. When we... Me and my wife don't go to a certain breakfast spot in, in Saranac Lake anymore. Because people don't fucking make eye contact with us. Because I said one joke from some bitch that wasn't even at the show. Got offended. And now that whole crew is trying to get people fired in the middle school for having NRA bumper stickers. This is just the beginning. And I will fight these people. But like, yeah, someone made this. <laughs> it's hilarious. That was already a painting, but just like, you, you just got to fucking brave through it. And, oh, you're bitching. You're bitching. I know a lot of these trolls telling me that I like complain too much or something are the same ones telling Aaron he shouldn't paint. It's like, oh, yeah, the one standing up and saying, why does your son have two black eyes? Why isn't he looking at anyone in the eye? He's five. What did you do to your son? 
And people being like, don't say anything. You're complaining too much. Why? That's not your business. Don't be nosy. No. That kid's five. Don't fucking hit your kid or you'll have to hit me. I'm six foot seven. I have guns. And I, I've been in enough fights to know how to not get fucked up. So, like, if you're going to hit your, friend, your, your, your boy, you're going to have to hit me. And then I will fuck you up. You know, one of the main groups of people trying to get me kicked off all these platforms are NAMBLA. The pedophiles. I'm dead serious. And if people think that's paranoia, why don't you look up Vice News, how they've done articles about how pedophiles are real people too. They're people just like everybody else. It's fucking sick. And yeah, I still do jokes even in this hellish world that's being created by the left. I still can do two hours in Pittsburgh and kill. So go fuck yourself if you think that I I bitch too much. All right, what else we got here? I'll read some more PayPal's in a second. I just want to see if I had any more things that I wanted to show. All right, what we got next? And God bless Aaron Harling. All right, realize the PayPal name shows up as my company. Chabad of Oswego. It's pronounced with a lot of phlegm. You know, the Jewish. <laughs> That's hilarious. <clears throat> you know, um, my name is uh, Yassi. And you verified me as Rabbi Bear. Last week, you promoted my podcast, Jews Did It First. Thank you so much. Wanted to let you know that this week's parting message on my podcast was based on your grow pubes before you tell people what to do comment. Thanks. Thanks for the inspiration. Thanks, brother. Yeah, we have a good Jewish population in Oswego because it was the only city in the, in the entire country to take in Jews during the Holocaust. And we're a fucking blue collar, redneck, hard drinking, hard fighting town that never had any issues with Jews because... Um, they're just kind people. They're like a sweet guy's kind people. And I got to grow up seeing that where, uh, it just was never an issue. You know, we divided based on what Catholic church you were, you went to, you know, there's St. Paul's and then St. Joe's, St. John's, St. Mary's. And, uh, that was more ethnic. That was, you know, the Irish went to St. Mary's, the Italians went to St. Joe's, the Polacks went to um, which was the Polak one? It was St. Stephen's, I think. But people can just be tribal and it has nothing to do with race. That's all just bullshit. All right. Oh, and you mentioned a while ago that you wanted to work with comedians and potentially help produce specials. Yep. I haven't heard it mentioned in the stream since before all hell broke loose, which is understandable. I'm just curious if that's something you were still looking into. I've sent a couple of videos of my own performance and I'm curious if due to recent events that has been pushed back. Anyway, God bless. It's all the same goal independence from the hollywood machine and yes i am absolutely planning on producing more specials in fact the fact i produced two of my own and um one for eric nimmer in a year pretty much alone so i I'm actually feel okay about that and i'm gonna keep doing this is what i want to do this is my goal is to set up a tour where we produce and i and i travel with the director and maybe uh sound and dp and a couple people and we produce someone special in their hometown home club uh and just do it you know live from dallas live from nashville live from phoenix live from uh chicago and uh and then we do a whole thing where you guys have ownership of your specials where but i get a piece until they're paid for and we create our own comedy uh, uh comedy outlet called unbearable comedy and and when I did, when I announced that in Pittsburgh, everyone just, just freaked out. There's two uh, major applause breaks that I didn't, I, I, I expected love, but what, what they gave me was so insightful into what is in the hearts of people right now. Is I, I, I gave it up to my wife, Amy, and people just, they stood and clapped for my wife. That's how tied into family this is. And another thing is I, I said, we're going to start our own comedy outlet. And people stood up and they clapped. And, and, they, and they were so good to Eric. They were so good to me. It was just wonderful. And I want, we can just keep growing this thing. And uh, the UNN, the Unbearables News Network, is something that I think I can have a lot of you guys do. Which is good for me to, to take a little off my shoulders where... You guys become correspondents. You guys do graphics. You guys do all the shit that you know how to do. And um, and we grow that. And then as we're doing that, we just 
figure out who should do specials, who should be taped, who should be filmed in a tour that we set up. And um, I, I did not expect the backlash I've had. When I first wanted to do Unbearable Comedy, I did not expect that there was a chance in hell that I could rent out a theater and be kicked out of the thing that I paid for. This has been an unbelievably unexpected curve in the road. Because I thought there was a chance that I would not be uh, booked by comedy clubs anymore. And that is obviously true. I knew I was never going to be booked by colleges. And corporations, depending on the size, middle of the road corporations, like 100 employees, they'll still book me. Major corporations, never. Because they're all about risk versus reward. And any backlash at all to like Coca-Cola, there's just no chance they would go with me. But to see me... To see just any venue get shut down, like I'm now having to figure out, I literally may start buying little pieces of land and and like low, this is how much I have to think about this and adapt, guys. Uh, Pieces of land, like cheap pieces of land in areas near cities and set up a touring tent. Like, I don't know about a tent, even if it's just an outdoor thing, like a makeshift fucking thing, structure that we can build and take down on my land that I buy for a cheap amount in a random city because it's that crazy how across the board, the socialists can shut you down and people say, Oh, well it's capitalism. Don't No, it isn't. I pay. I'll say, here's two grand to rent your fucking space. And they say, we can't take your money. We think you're funny. We hate that we have to do this. But if we have a hundred Yelp reviews saying we're racist, um, we'll go out of business. And then there's people that don't give a fuck that are like, no, we all know those people are idiots, but it's hard to find those people because they're not the ones who own uh, theaters. So yeah, I'm, I've been facing a lot of shit guys, a lot. And the, the social shame and embarrassment is, is nothing compared to just the logistics of trying to figure out how to make this happen. And, um, because the social shame and embarrassment, I don't really feel because I don't respect them. Like once I see someone take a knee like that, someone who can't quote anything I've said that's racist and just calls me racist, I see them as cowards. I, I write them off. I, I don't care anything about them at that point. I see them as useful idiots. They're my own useful idiots. Where if I can get them to just not cancel me at the fucking venue, great. If not, they can just fall down a flight of stairs for all I give a fuck. Like literally I would be sad if they died because I think like maybe they had a family or something. But at that point, I just think they're fucking useless. It's like, oh, you're just going to ruin someone just because you want more gold. Fucking losers. All right. Christian, Mr. Owen Benjamin, this is the bear who sniffles from California whom whom you had given a few bucks to recently to help with his auto situation. A huge difference was made on your part, and I was able to get past this shit. Though I'm paying you back, here's half. Oh, dude, you don't have to pay me back. The whole point was you don't have to pay me back. I was wondering why the fuck you gave me such a big super chat. Please, two things. One, I'm changing my verification to what you see here. Um, If you haven't read it, please check out the story of Turin Tarambar, a tragic hero in the first age of Tolkien's legendarium. You won't find a more heart-wrenching tale than this. I would look for it in Unfinished Tales of the Children of Huron. Uh, if anybody has had a harder life than me, it would be this guy. Music request, Fearless by Pink Floyd. Please take all the time in the world that you might enjoy reading through the lyrics on stream. Christian. Uh, sweet, buddy. You didn't have to pay me back, man. Your email was great, and I felt like uh, the money I gave you could go a long way in that situation. And that was, um, but I appreciate it. Either way, it doesn't matter. I think some people have to do that or else they, they feel weird. But just don't feel weird. The worst is when I give people money to help them out and then they get really insecure and then they end up hating me. It's the most fucking bizarre thing in the world. I, I don't, all right, I'll play you Fearless, bud. I love that song. I, I once did a, uh, a picture of me in the crowd and then my brother in a tree. And it said, fearlessly the idiot faced the crowd. <clears throat> you, you, that's so high. You say the hill's too steep to climb. Climb it. All right, 
high. That's really high for me. You, you, you pick the place and I'll choose the time. And I'll climb that hill in my own way. Just wait a while for the right day. And as I rise above the tree line in the clouds, I look down. Sound of the things you said today. All right, there's one more lyric. All right, so it goes Fearlessly, the idiot faced the crowd, smiling. Merciless, the magistrate turns around, frowning. And who's, and who's the fool who wears the crown? No doubt, in your own way. And every day, so it's like, and no doubt, and no doubt. What's that? Pick the place and I'll choose the time. Ah, uh, and no doubt in your own. Ah, uh, ah, uh, oh shit. Ah, uh, just wait a while. Climb that. Oh, it's a C. Nice. So it's um, and no doubt in your own way. And every day the right day and as you rise above the fear line in his brow you look down hear the sound of the faces in the crowd it's a good song i love that and you rise above the fear lines in his brow that's so cool and who's the fool that wears the crown? <laughs> All right, thanks, buddy. Uh, where were we? Where were we, ladies and gentlemen? Again, you did not have to pay me back. But he wrote me this really touching email about how his dad had passed away. And he, uh, he just needed a couple hundred bucks to get a new truck because his dad's truck uh, was hard to, for him to drive and um and and just he wrote about his life and i was just pretty touched by it but then again i am a full-blown fag all right hey Owen, made a couple short clips for the unbearable news network the first station identifier yeah will you email that to uh unbearable news network at gmail breaking news david hogg and justin trudeau continue their long brave boycott of toxic masculinity that's funny yeah send it to me aaron Hey, I'm Aaron Bear. I have a great voice and can do voiceover work. I'll get you some samples of my voice. Let me know where I can send it to. Love what you're doing. I'm an avid fan and would love to be part of UNN. Thank you so much, Big Bear. Love it. Another thing you guys can do is send me pictures of like you or your friends or anything that we can just write pieces about. Like, like there's one of, um, you know, it's like area man frustrated that his dick doesn't go past his pubes. You know, like anything. Where we can almost just like um, take a picture of someone we don't even know and just write funny news stories about that guy. Uh, Matthew, hey Owen, you and I have talked over email over the past few days with Jordan. Just wanted to give you some honey and thank you for all you do. I'm planning on putting together some more logos and maybe you'd like to use them for bumper stickers or website materials. Let me know how you'd like me to send them to you. Bare phone tags don't have the number though. Or through your email. Also, can I be verified as Wisco Bear? Thanks for everything, man. I hope you can catch up to discuss UNN and such with Genghis Bear. Welcome, Wisco Bear. And of course, yeah, um, email me at why didn't they laugh at gmail.com and I'll check it as soon as we're done here and we'll get each other, we'll exchange info and just keep on keeping on. Um, yeah, graphics are a major part of the UNN. And uh, Base Texans taking a good leadership role in this as well. So that's huge. Ryan, hey, Big Bear, it's Wheelie Bear. Just wanted to say hi and tell you thanks for creating the Unbearables. It's a great cult. I mean, community. Ha ha. Can you, play, can you please play Beast of Burden by the Stones? It's such an underrated song. And don't forget, socialism always ends in starvation and genocide always. Of course. I got you, buddy. Beast of Burden. To show the spirit of the Unbearables, Wheelie Bear is in a wheelchair, and that's why he calls himself Wheelie Bear. It's hysterical. <sighs> I'll never be I'll never be a beast of burden My 
back is broad It's kinda hurting Is that it? No All I want for you to make a No, that, I'm playing this wrong, I think C, C sharp minor No, that's right All I want is for you to make a love to me I'll never be your beast of burden Uh I've never played this before. I'm just doing it because I love Willie Bear and the stones are sweet. I've walked for miles, my feet are hurting. It's, kind of, it's, it's, it's funny coming from a guy in a wheelchair. Your feet aren't hurting from walking for miles. You should, I'll do one. How about I'll do one for, uh, for Willie Bear? Uh, I'll never be your beast of burden. I've wheeled for miles, my hands are hurting. All I want. Is you to make a love to me Do I wheel hard enough? Are my hands rough enough? Am I rich enough? I'm not too blind to wheel I'll never be your beast of burden I'm in a wheelchair but I'll make your pussy hurtin'. Oh, I'm sorry, that was a little uh, crude. But I think a, a cool angle of it was, would be like, sung from a wheelchair guy who's not a beast of burden. Because <laughs> uh, it's funny for two different reasons. Like one, just a burden. And another, a beast of burden is uh, someone who shoulders the weight for like a woman, like a, like a donkey. You know, and it's, all, it's funny thinking about someone in a wheelchair like, like wheeling like a plow. Where it's like, uh, maybe it's funny to be like, I'll never, I'll never be your, your wheelie beast of burden. Um, carrying, carrying your groceries, my front cart thing is hurting. Be like, you could have just got a shopping cart. What the fuck? That could be funny. All right. What do we got here? When I watch a ton of Norm Macdonald clips, which I have recently, I start almost doing that like, hey, hey. Well, what do you think, Barbara? Hey, Owen, please make a note of this or screenshot it to come back to later to read for yourself. Thanks. All right, I'm going to screenshot it and then I'll come back later and read, to it, read it. Uh, Ryan, hey, Big Bear, Willie Bear. Oh, I just read that one. Timothy. Is it too late to suggest man on the street interviews for UNN? Dude, it, it's, a, it's a constant growth thing. It's never too late for anything with, with it. Of course I want to do man on the street interviews. UNN asks SJWs, what does Cinco de Mayo mean to you? It's not Mexican Independence Day. It's about the defeat of the French Navy. Right. I, I'm telling you guys, anything you guys can send me, send it. If you're like at a bar for Cinco de Mayo and you want to ask people what it means, it doesn't have to be like high production quality one of the funny parts is going to be it's just cell phone shit where you can be like hey this is drunk bear in a bar uh reporting like the fact that we're just normal people reporting is fucking hilarious where you're like just do interviews with your phone you don't have to have like a microphone or any of that shit it could just be hilarious right and that, like my job would be to take it very seriously and have like a graphic behind me and be like uh, breaking news from our correspondent, you know, like to make it so that you guys are like really seen as really good journalists because the, of course the irony is, is what you're revealing is more real than the shit on CNN. David, could you comment on the difference between nations and states, how the European nation state worked out also about the difference between United States and United Nations. I also think is an interesting topic. P.S. I don't mind throwing a buck at you to chat. It's like hanging with the piano guy at the bar and tossing a buck to tip. Uh, yeah, dude, that that's one thing that I see it as. I used to be a bar piano guy, and I see no problem with someone throwing a tip for like uh, for a song or something. But unfortunately, I think I'm going to disappoint you. I don't know the difference between a nation and a state uh, specifically enough to comment on it. I'm going to take the Socratic way out in this and say I don't know anything on this. The difference between the United States and the United Nations. Okay, I well, you can see the difference... In that, like United Nations, ah, man, this is getting real complicated. I'll, I'll think a lot more about that. 
That is a, that is a hell of a question. The father of nations. I, I once uh, I heard of a guy named Nation. I always thought that was a cool name. Nation. All right, my, uh, I'm going to read a couple more of these and then we're going to have our days. Hey, Big Bear, I've got unbearable radio up and running and the bear feed is currently being simulcast in high quality greatness. That's amazing. I'm also building a website which should be done by the end of the week. People can visit unbearableradio.com. The link to the station is there or here's the link. Um, I don't know how to do that. Hope you dig it, man. It's the least we could do to support the mission. Uh, dude, I love it, Jer Bear. Yeah, so check that out, everybody. It's uh, unbearableradio.com. That sounds awesome. Kyle, hey, Big Bear. So I'm noticing a trend at work that whenever I find myself overwhelmed, my internal dialogue becomes becomes really left-sounding. I start criticizing people doing better than me, trying to drop... Yeah, dude, we all have it in us. It's Cain and Abel, bro. It's the fucking... It, we all have the ability of being a leftist in us. It's the shadow self, as Young describes... It's, this isn't about good person, bad person. It's about every person being good and bad and, and picking the right path. All right, anyway, trying to dr draw attention to myself as a victim and demanding special circumstances to help catch up to people doing better. I'm able to catch myself doing this and stop it, but it has me thinking. I think a majority of people that act like this way are coming from a point of low self-confidence. They don't think they can handle things without intervention. It's very infantile, childlike behavior that is very close to crying for your mother. I was wondering what you thought about this. Yeah, I fight that too, man. This is like an example that I can give you from my life. When people call me racist, my first instinct is to go, well, I have a lot of black friends. My wife's half Hispanic. I'm a quarter Jewish, uh, which I didn't even know I was, but I always knew I was up to something. Who, th that's weak. Like what I'm doing is playing into their own game when I do that. That's why I don't do that anymore. Because what if I was just all white and my wife was all white and my kids were all white? What the fuck is wrong with that? What 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 if my audience is all white? What's wrong with that? Like someone the other day was like, it's good you had a few black people at your show. I'm like, why? Who cares? Like that is playing into that bullshit. Like what if no, what, like if, if at a two chains concert, if there's no white people, does anyone give a shit? No. I, I'm not going to, that's my version of that, where I want to play up any any connection I have whatsoever with non-white people uh, in order to be not racist, when in fact it doesn't, that wouldn't even mean someone isn't racist. I know racist black people that hate black people. Like it's, it, it that to me, I, I, I don't think it's low self-esteem. What I think it is, is it's easy. It's really, really easy and quick. It's dopamine versus oxytocin, where it's the quickest way to get what you want is to say that you're a victim. You know, like if you're if some chick's at a party and um, she just wants to take over a conversation, all she has to do is be like, I was raped. And everyone's like, Whoa. you know, if someone's yelling at her, how did you why did you just take all of our fucking hors d'oeuvres? And she's like. I was raped last night. And they're like, oh, take the hors d'oeuvres. It's just the quickest, like to say you're a victim is the quickest way to get what you want. And uh, it's the boy who cried rape at this point where people are starting to not even believe actual rape victims because so many idiots are just using it. Um, good question though. Good good, good on you to notice that in yourself because that's, that's the way out of hell is what you just did. Because there's nobody alive that doesn't, battle things battle whether or not it's greed or lust or, or rage or any of that shit uh and uh or just wanting to be a victim or any any of that it's it's like that's gonna be in you the rest of your life that's why man that's why you know man has fallen we ate the apple it's like we you have to tolerate the fact that you have this in you but the difference is seeing it and seeing it as the patheticness it, that it is all right Oh, and you should do back and forth between Eddie and Bob, Dylan singing. Oh, oh I do that live now. Also, can you please uh, work up a piano medley of my favorite things from My Fair Lady? Of course. I'm not sure. Uh, what is that? Oh, is there any chance I can get access to the bare phone? I'm not sure that committing 20 a month is prudent right now. I am on the mailing list as a subscriber, and I did send you some unbearable gifts for your boys that I embraced. Oh, of course, dude. Of course you can have access to the bare phone. The only reason I make it a specific number is that so it doesn't just become another 
email that I don't see anything. So that's all it is. And also, when when and if they shut me down from all these platforms, they can't take down Verizon. And I will be able to contact the real fucking, the real committed dudes and ladies that, that have been supporting the show. I know that if I write to you, like, they kick me off Instagram, they kick me off the internet. Uh, this is where people can find me. And I think that we're developing a good enough network in there because a lot of people will write me in the bare phone. This is what I ask usually is just what area of the country you live in or world and like what special skills you want to bring to the unbearables, whether or not you're looking for work, whether or not you just want to do shit with us, whether or not when, when we're in town, you could like, you know, do security or food or help if we ever building a tent, shit like that. It's more just about that. And if you... If for anybody that has a bare phone number, you don't have to keep paying 20 a month if you don't want to. I don't care. You can bail. It's not like this weird money commitment thing. It just is a way to weed out uh, trolls and fucking shitty people. And I truly don't want your money. Like if it's manipulative at all or if you're at all like hurting at all. But I also do need money to, to keep this going. And I'm not going to get it from any government network any of that shit. And I've, I have so many fucking roadblocks at this point that it's a joke. And the fact we've survived this long and I can still fill rooms is unbelievable. It's such a miracle. The fact that there's thousands of people watching this right now is miraculous. Think about how hard it is for people to build YouTube followings without any barriers. Or like, I went from 3,000 to 110,000 in six months. And then they had to shut me the fuck down. They just told me that they reviewed my video and it is in fact hate speech, so I won't be able to upload. Not only can I not live stream on YouTube, I can't even upload until July. We switched to Vimeo. I we we reworked all of this shit. And we're 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 the people still came. That's that is a miracle that you guys all did that. So that's why I ask you guys to support if you can, because we're, we have to like fucking reshape things on the go constantly, constantly adapting. And the amount um, of flexibility and adaptation that, that my audience, you guys have, um, have given me is amazing. I, I'm the luckiest comedian in the world for this shit. Like so many comedians have audiences that are just lazy. They're just there because they're told to be there. That's because it's prime time on CBS or because it's on the front of Netflix every day and everyone hates it. But they just watch it because it's there. And then lazy people that don't act anything out in their life just go, oh, I guess I like Amy Schumer. Oh, I guess I like this new guy that sucks. Well, this is what comedy is, so I guess I'm going to see him. We'll pay $80 to go see him live and he'll suck. You guys have broken away from that. All right. Sweet. Moving on. So yeah, you can have the bare phone, obviously. Just uh, email me. But just title it bare phone. I don't know if you saw the email, but yesterday uh, I ran to an old friend. He's got six sons and we carpooled with him and his wife when the kids were school age. He's also medical director of the pediatric clinic of uh, major Detroit area hospital. He's been in practice for 30 years. I asked him, what would have happened 30 years ago if you prescribed puberty blocking hormones for medically healthy children? He said with certainty, I would have lost my license. The left has corrupted every profession. It has. Education, medicine, entertainment. They've all fallen. And so do something in your life. to, to and, and culture is uh, upstream of, of politics. Like culture makes politics. So what we're doing is very important. I'm never going into politics, but we're going to make some fucking really funny shit. And you guys got to help me spread it because I'm being actively censored by the United States government. Good times. And people are just so lazy and selfish. Holy fuck. It's like... <laughs> they're trying to shut down a public library because they let a comedian with all the credits you can possibly have perform. There was no complaints at the show. The staff loved it. The cops loved it. Everyone wrote wonderful emails. And they're listening to these complaints. The, this, the, 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 the library is not saying, shut up, crazy people. They're saying, you know, we're having spirited debates. It's fucking bullshit, man. Our kids are fucked if you guys don't do some shit. I'm doing everything I can. So, you know. 
All right, I'm just going to the next one. I've, uh, all right, haven't been able to watch most of the feed because I have to pretend to be a good teacher, LOL. Wonderful story. Or wondering about Stein delivery, I ordered two for floating down the river. When you get a chance, take a look at this article, further proof that uh, those in charge of public education are predators. Uh, Dangerous.com slash watch transgender instructional video kits featuring uh, loving portraits of rapists, serial killers. Much love to you, Beauty and the Cubs, Andrea. Thank you, Andrea. Yeah, it's fucked. The kids are fucked. You're not a man if you don't protect your kids. You're not a woman if you don't protect your kids. So fucking buck up and do some shit. And there's there's a million ways to do it. You just have to face what you think is scary. Just say, no, I like Owen Benjamin's comedy. He's not a racist, you fucking psycho. You don't have to say it like that. That's how I'd say it. Richard, you're the best. Oh, thanks, buddy. Jesse, Owen, oh, your choice to read aloud. Uh, well, I got it. Um, Another option for venues is bears that are members of sportsmen's clubs. I'm a member of a private sportsman club that has a farm, a thousand acres of property that I can rent incredibly cheap anytime. Dude, that sounds brilliant. Rifle, pistol ranges, playgrounds for kids, baseball fields. There are three pavilions. Oh, it's brilliant, dude. Brilliant. I love that. The country's just going to keep splitting between the healthy, happy legends and the fucking sad, sick rapists of the left. And let's, let's just fucking do that. I'm going to start buying land just in random places where there's like, where it's pretty cheap, not even with a plan in my mind, but I think that literally there's going to come a time when it's a, it's a fight over land, like who owns the, the infrastructure and, um, yeah, the sports clubs and shit are gold mine. Uh, David. Hey, Owen, it's Blaze Bear again. A quick song request. I have heard a few Lincoln co uh, piano covers in the end is my favorite. Also, I think it would be hilarious for Norm Macdonald to do a voiceover for the UNN. Just imagine him saying the most trusted name in fake news. Hey, guys, shut up, please. The dogs. They just bark at fucking nothing. Uh, Lincoln Park. And then I have to go. Hey, love, why is Benny barking at nothing? I don't, have, I don't have time to do any more piano, guys. I really don't. I love you. Next time, I promise I'll do Linkin Park. I've done it before. It's great. I just want to get to all these, and then, uh, you know, we got to show the house, which has been devastatingly sad for me. Erwin, don't let the soy sneak in. Good. I like it, Erwin Benj Benjamin. Samuel. <clears throat> Hello, Rail Bear here. To everyone going to Jordan Peterson's Detroit show on Sunday... May the 6th. It's two days away. I would very much like to meet any bears that are going. Maybe we could get a bite to eat before or after the showing. All you have to do is say something. Message is copied from Discord. Awesome. Yeah, hit him up. Hang out. That's Rail Bear. Oh, and subscribe to uh, Owen Benjamin Clips channel. That's uh, We live stream on there as well, as on Vimeo, as on Facebook. And um, why didn't they laugh on everywhere you can get podcasts? That's growing like fucking crazy right now, which is awesome. The audio world is just not really uh censorable which is just that's where most of you guys uh listen to this is in is audio it's amazing david owen oh, netflix is basically hollywood mutual masturbation so of course your stream is better also people who aren't socialists are dying for creative outlets that are uh receptive to us virtually hanging out with you and the bears is like spin class for the mind that's a great way to put it the downside is that now I have a parody of 16 going on 17 stuck in my head. You were 17, now you're 18, you're dressed by Hugo Boss. You want my guns, I'm just going to read it out. You want my guns and to kill my fun, but your whining is just weak sauce. You were 17, now you're 18, but you still have no pubes. You were a minor, but now you're older, so I can make fun of you. That's hysterical. So thanks for the streams, but I also curse you sometimes too. I love you, buddy. So, um... Uh, Write me any news stories you want me to read or cover. Send me videos of things you see. Report in the field. Do not think for a second it has to be, uh, it has to be uh, like high quality. The high quality should be in the studio, but in the field, just send me anything. And, and let's just fucking make Unbearable News Network amazing. And uh, we have a, a website. I believe it's unbearablenewsnetwork.com, but also at Gmail. Gang of Spare is running that. And um, Portland tickets still available. 
so are some in Bellevue, some in Richland, all in Washington. We're, we're going to go up there looking at houses um, at hugepianist.com and spread this around. I, as I said, I can't advertise and I'm very censored. I was growing exponentially before I was kicked off Twitter and YouTube. We've maintained the bears, but growth has been uh, staggered. Just being straight up. Because Vimeo isn't a destination. That, Vimeo is a destination where you know what you're going to see. It's not a place where uh, people just hang and watch bullshit. So I, I need help with this. I need help spreading the message. Uh, subscribe to Vimeo. Subscribe to all these places. and Because uh, it's up to us to spread our culture. And I'm willing to do it. There's not a lot of comics that were willing to do it. And I am. So support me. Because that supports all of us. And um, uh, what else is I just going to say? I fucking forgot. Oh, my last two specials are available only at Vimeo right here. It's uh, one's called How Dare Me, shot in Saranac Lake, which is all the, where all the controversy came from. Just because I made fun of Bernie Sanders and did the bike song. It's fucking so stupid. And then the one before I shot in England. That's called um, Feed the Bear. Got to feed that bear, baby. And support each other. Follow the, each other on Twitter. The bears. Bears for bears, baby. Because there's a lot of us, and, and it's cool. And I'm going to have a great day. And I hope you are too. And it was great hanging out with you. Much love, everybody. Peace.